Today's subject is kind of a cool bit of research around the American saxophones in the 1930s, and that is the evolution of the articulated G-sharp key. So before the saxophones in the mid-30s, every note in the left hand spatula cluster, whatever you want to call it, um, was unarticulated. So you'd have the one key for G-sharp, the one key for C-sharp, the one key for B, and the one key for B-flat. And it stayed like this it's roughly the first 50 years of the instrument's history. A little bit longer, depending on what patent date you're using. Um, and in the development of these American professional horns at this time, uh, the research departments at Kahn and Busher came up with a way to articulate the G-sharp key. And I keep saying this word, articulated G-sharp, because that is what Alan Loomis used in his saxophone patent that revolves around the 6M from 1933. Uh, but what this does and how this works is, and I'm going to switch horns for a second to show you. Um, as he described in the patent, I mean, the four individual pieces, I'm going to hold this a little bit close so you can see, of the cluster, right, work with a set of, you know, back plates and hinges. So where this is traditionally just the key for G sharp, will now also be activated when you press the C-sharp key, the B key, or the B-flat. This is huge for saxophonists because it allows them, depending on the size of their hands, or depending on what key they're playing in or just what happens to be, they now have four options to play the G-sharp key instead of just the one. Right? Now, saxophones before uh, World War II in the, the mid-40s, would also have the alternate G-sharp key. And that's a whole different conversation for another time. The spatula keys themselves open up the player's hand, like mine especially with the large paw that I have, um, to, you know, have a couple more G-sharp options. So, for example, right, and I'll warm up real fast on this saxophone. Um, yeah, the read is where it is, it'll be fine. Um, if I'm running a passage and I need to play a G-sharp, but I happen to, you know, have a long pinky, I can now play my G-sharp with my pinky there rather than being here. So I have a little bit more space in my fingers, and I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> flat, but it's coming out as my G sharp or A flat, depending on what key you're in. Um, this articulated mechanism makes a very, very large difference, especially in this flat American style table of the spatula keys, because you're using these rollers in between to slide to where you need to go in the lower stack, but it also just means that to play, you know, the flat version of the A or the raised version of G, you just press any one of these keys to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, because I also have it on my tenor, I'm gonna play my tenor today because I just wanna play a little bit of both. But as you can see, we have a con naked lady um, from 1939, and we have a Bush aristocrat from 1945 that both have this articulated G sharp, which makes the, the, the lower stack keys a little bit more navigable for the different hand sizes. So 
Thanks for stopping by for this little mini lesson in saxicology, and we will continue right along with the next one. And I'll play you guys out, and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.